there a minute, will you? Oh, dear. It didn't happen again. Uh-huh. Again. Come here. Sit down. Now, the checkbook says we have $126. But the bank says we have $98. Maybe the bank made a mistake. Oh, sure. I know I put down every check I wrote this month. Here's a check for the electric bill and the stub. What's this one? Central Equipment Company, $28. For the tractor repair, of course. I told you about it. I know you told me, but where's the stub? Why, well, it's... Well, I entered it. I must have. Well... So this time it's my fault, but most of the time... You're as bad as I am. Honestly, we can't make out a dozen checks a month without making a mistake. But anyway, something good did come in the mail today. Oh, I've been expecting this check. Wonder if this fellow ever has trouble like that. What fellow? Robert F. Kent. Who's Robert F. Kent? The state treasurer, the man who signed that gasoline tax return check. I wonder how he balances our state checkbook. I'm the Robert Kent who signed your gasoline tax return check, John. I'm the state treasurer. I expected a lot of Pennsylvanians, just like you, wonder how the Commonwealth handles its money. After all, it's really your money, owned jointly by you and all your fellow citizens. It's the money you have entrusted to the state for the conduct of its official business. Guarding your money would be a simple matter if it were merely stored here in the form of bonds and securities. But it's busy money, constantly flowing back and forth. And the job of accounting for it, down to the very last penny, is one of the most complex of all state responsibilities. Of course, I depend upon the professional abilities and the many services of financial institutions, the numerous banks within the state where we deposit our funds and much in the same manner you depend upon the bank where you keep your personal account. I'm sure I don't have to remind you how important your bank is to you and your family. As this behind-the-scenes report of the activity of my office unfolds, I'm equally sure you will realize how important these banks are to us in carrying out the financial business of the Commonwealth. What exactly is it that we do with your state funds? First, a number of agencies of the state government are authorized to collect money. All of these and other money paid to the state is delivered to the state treasurer. Over a billion dollars a year passes through this bureau. Much of the money comes to us from the Department of Revenue, whose messengers deliver it to us several times a day. Most of the money is in the form of checks. We take in about 12 million individual checks a year. All items are checked and entered before the end of the day and packed in mail sacks, except for cash, which is deposited in a local bank. At 6 o'clock, these bags, which on an average day will contain about $7 million worth of checks, are shipped to the Federal Reserve Bank in Philadelphia for collection. We then redistribute this money among the banks in various parts of Pennsylvania, which are the active state depositories. And all Commonwealth checks are drawn against these banks. In recent months, there has been a remarkable speed up in the time it takes us to get checks out. Actually, we now get them out six times faster than in other years. For example, it once took a year to process the farmer's gasoline tax return. Now we do the same job in from two to six weeks. A million and a half checks bearing my signature will go into the mails in a normal month. The writing of each check requires several different operations. Using modern high-speed electronic business machines, the steps are accomplished with perfect accuracy. Because the machines are automatic in the compiling of data, each check is punched. These punches, as you will see later, enable one of the machines to translate the punches into printed figures for our records, or to sort them for accounting purposes. On this machine, the amount is written out. 
Next, the checks are sorted, and we can sort them in a number of different ways. By the banks on which they are drawn, by the state funds they are drawn against, or by the dates on which they are drawn. When they have been properly sorted, we are ready to compile the check register. You can think of this as our check stub, the same as you keep when writing your own checks. All the necessary accounting information about the check is printed automatically on this continuous strip of paper. The checks are again sorted, and now the checks are ready to be imprinted. The final operation is the affixing of the date and my signature. Thus, we have transformed these millions of blank forms into negotiable checks, each payable at one of the numerous banks in which the state deposits funds. These depositories, the banks in which we keep our accounts, perform many of the services for us that they do for you, the individual depositors. These services are invaluable to our department. With these banks, we maintain two types of accounts. One type corresponds to your checking account. We call these active accounts and draw all our checks against them. We have 23 of these accounts. Our other type of account is known as a time deposit. We have 446 of them. When we make deposits in these accounts, we agree to give the banks 90 days notice before we withdraw the money. The banks, in turn, pay us a prescribed rate of interest. Our time deposits are just one way that your money earns more money for the state. We keep every spare dollar earning interest until we need it. In this way, our state funds actually earn about $5 million a year as additional revenue. The Treasury Department, you see, acts as an agent in determining investment of money entrusted to it. For example, money that is not immediately needed, we invest in short-term U.S. government obligations. This part of the job occupies much of my time and makes it necessary for me to be completely informed daily about our cash position. We determine what securities to buy and sell each day by taking stock of our situation every morning about 11 o'clock. At that time, our securities expert, Mr. Fickling, goes into action. Let's drop in on him and see how he carries out this phase of our operation. First. He determines how many millions of dollars of securities he will buy on this particular day. Then he prepares a list of security agents, all dealers in federal government securities. Now he is ready to buy. Mr. Henderson is on the wire. Oh, hello, Walter. This is Art Fickling in Harrisburg speaking. We're in the market this morning for 10 million treasury notes of August 1960 and 5 million Treasury bills October 22nd, regular delivery. Okay, Walter, I'll let you know. After I get offerings from three or four dealers, I place the order where we can get the highest rate of interest. The order is then written and a check for the amount of the purchase is mailed out the same day. I'm sure you will be interested to know that in this way we earn more than four million dollars in additional revenue for the Commonwealth during a normal year. And speaking of large sums of money, right now I am literally sitting on more than a billion and a half dollars because that's the value of the securities in the basement under this office. It's quite a remarkable room. There is a double combination on all vault doors and cages. No one man has the total combination. The vault is a cube of case-hardened steel which lines its floor, walls, and roof. The ingenious door is a cylinder of solid steel with a corridor hollowed through its center. The main vault is divided into six cages. The walls of the vault are honeycombed with a network of wires. 
a battery-operated alarm system connecting with the state police headquarters. The work in the fault is quite routine, unless you consider handling hundreds of millions of dollars in securities to be exciting. In addition to storing the securities, we collect interest on them and redeem them when they become due and credit the money to the agency that owns them. You have heard the expression applied to very wealthy people that they have nothing to do but clip coupons. With us, it is quite a chore, so much so that we have had a special cutting machine built. We keep most bonds in batches of 50, and the machine cuts 50 coupons at a time. They are sent to a local bank for collection. On some bonds, we do not have enough to use the cutter and cut by hand, as they are doing on these $1 million government bonds. These are the largest coupon bonds that we have in terms of value, but we have some non-coupon bonds that are worth more. These insignificant looking pieces of paper are each worth $10 million. They are U.S. government bonds. Well, that's just about the story of how we handle your money here at the state treasury. The job you have entrusted to me as your state treasurer. Yes? Mr. Kent, you have a meeting this afternoon with the state school building authority. All right. I'll be leaving in just a few minutes. I can assure you the days are busy around here. My secretary's call just now reminds me that in addition to my duties as your state treasurer, state law demands that I be a member of 12 different agencies of the government, most of which are authorized to invest money. I'm the treasurer of some of them so that I can approve their investments. The job of being treasurer of the Commonwealth is a most important one, one in which the full responsibility is present 24 hours each day. Every dollar that goes into the treasury, and there are more than a billion of them each year, is my responsibility. During the course of this film, you have seen how my job is accomplished. You have seen many members of my staff at work. Yet, one of the most important things you have not seen. It is something you cannot see, but I can express to you now. It is our appreciation to the people of Pennsylvania for the opportunity you have given us to serve you, to fulfill my function as the guardian of your money.